Hello and welcome to the Audio Time Capsule, episode 12. For those of you new to the show, I'm comedian Simon Kane, and this is the podcast where I bring on a guest, get them to leave 20 questions, and then a year later bring them back on to answer them. I then edit it so they're talking to their past self. All past voices will sound like this, and all future voices will sound like this. To give you an example of how the show is structured, here is a question I recorded for myself just before this week's guest arrived. Hello Simon, are you at Inbox Zero? I have a feeling this question is going to piss you off because it pisses me off when I'm not at inbox zero. You set yourself a target to make sure that your inbox never has more than 10 things waiting in it. Have you managed to get fewer than 10 emails in your inbox? That has pissed me off, Simon, of the past, you bastard. Um, I have not hit inbox zero. I'm currently at two emails and both of them can't move because I'm waiting for someone else to reply to another email. So I I did hit inbox zero a, a couple of times this year. I think a big part of becoming an adult is just accepting that your inbox will never be empty. But I, I think that's probably a good sign. It means you've got lots of work coming in and people are demanding on your time. So you're sort of of interest to people. But uh, no, I'm currently not at inbox zero. But I've reframed it. And I think it's a good thing now, even though it still pisses me off that I don't have an empty inbox. Thanks for that. Let's start the episode. This week, we are talking to award-winning comedian Sarah Keyworth. She spent the last year trying to get to grips with a lot of her own inner demons and has been in a long-term relationship with another performer. And we talk about how that's impacted her life and how she's had to go through a lot of self-improvement to, to become more comfortable in herself, in her relationship and in her career. I found this really, really interesting and heartwarming it was quite open and honest and it was one of the ones that i uh, really really liked putting together so i hope you enjoy it as much as i do if you're new here please do remember to hit the subscribe button if you're old here please do consider giving us an honest review in itunes and either way please do join the facebook group it's called the audio time capsule and it's on facebook obviously Uh, or follow us on twitter at audio time travel but for now let's open the audio time capsule of sarah keyworth Hi, my name is Sarah Keyworth. I don't know why I say Sarah Keyworth like that. Sarah Keyworth. My name is Sarah Keyworth. Today's date is the 8th of October 2016. I'm currently sat in a a dungeon. Um, It is... There's there's a bucket with... Like a full bucket of water that has just got a, a drip going into it, which is kind of... You might be able to hear it in the background, actually, which is an idea of the glamour of the place. But the most depressing thing is it is 2016 London and this room would probably be £800 in rent because we're an angel. So that's where I am. I am feeling excited about this project. I think it's going to be good. I'm slightly nervous because in some of my questions I feel like I've been a bit mean and sarcastic and undermining. I feel like I've written questions from the point of view of my mother. (laughs) So this could go either way. Um, But I'm good. I'm excited. I think it's a really good idea. Hello, uh, I'm Sarah Keyworth. Uh, my name has not changed. Uh, it is the 22nd of October 2017 and I am upstairs in the Bill Murray pub sat opposite Simon King. I'm feeling slightly apprehensive about opening my time capsule because the only memory I have of doing this last year was coming away thinking that they might have been the dullest questions that anybody has ever asked themselves. And I think I did it all in like a serious monotone as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be gripping, I think. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> At the moment, you're not very good at being self-employed. Have you figured out how to be self-employed or do you still just sit around watching Netflix? Um, I'm, I don't think I've actually got any better at being self-employed. I think the nice thing is I'm getting paid slightly more for the gigs that I'm doing. Um, humble brag. Uh, slightly more, I mean, like, marginally more. I think I've gotten better at doing my taxes in the sense that I discovered one of my friends is an accountant and she's happy to do my taxes for me. So I just send her a, like, bag full of receipts and stuff and then she hates me for about a few weeks. But other than that, yeah, I watch a lot of Netflix. A lot of Netflix. At the moment, you're thinking about writing your next Edinburgh show about wanting to be a dad. Uh, has that worked out how you wanted it to be? Or is it shit? <laughs> Um, it was shit. It was shit. It was a shit show. I did not write a show about wanting to be a dad. So yeah, I wrote a show about how I was a millennial and I had no idea what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. So yeah, so I, d- I did not do that. That did not happen. I am now writing a show about a small girl. That's not me, a different small girl. A small girl writing a show about a small girl. That's what's happening right now. 
at the moment you're like really bitching and moaning about something that's going on in your life that I'm not sure if we should mention live on the podcast that we might be able to mention in like a year. Uh, did you make a good decision about that? And if not, what's your fucking problem? If you can't remember the thing that we're bitching and moaning about, I assume the answer is yes, you made a good decision. So well done. Proud of you. I think I know what that was. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I think I know. I think basically my girlfriend is also a comedian and I think I, we were having a, a few issues about the, how that was going to work and I think I was finding it difficult in terms of like comparing ourselves to each other and if, if that is the thing that I was bitching and moaning about then we have figured it out and that is good so that's nice but it, it could be that or it could be like I had a rash and I just don't know about it but I, I, don't, I don't know what I was bitching and moaning about I'm bitching and moaning all the time I should have been more specific about my bitch and moans I like complaining the issue that I was bitching and moaning about was the basically the fact that I felt like Catherine was like I found it really difficult being with a comedian and when we first met I had been gigging for a bit longer so I was doing a bit better and then after that Catherine had some serious success and it was quite difficult because I was we were sort of comparing each other ourselves to each other and every time one of us got something it was quite difficult and there's always that question of oh how come they got that how come and you kind of do that with other it's not just your partner you kind of do that with all comedians that's a real problem with being a comedian is comparing yourself to other people and I'm a very jealous person and I'm not, yeah I don't mind admitting that I was tempted to write a show about being a jealous person but then I I don't know I don't know if it's very funny maybe I could make it funny I don't know but yeah so I think I have definitely gotten more confident in what I want to do in the way that I do comedy and so that's kind of how it's been resolved it will I've not any I don't think I've made any really bad decisions recently as far as I know come back to me on that one how are things with Catherine are you still together did you fuck it up if you fucked it up you're an idiot if you haven't fucked it up have you moved house yet because we really want to move house that'd be nice yeah, we're still together. I haven't fucked it up so far. I, okay, that maybe that's not the thing that I was bitching and moaning about because that I covered that in the next question, or maybe that was a subtle way of reminding me what the question was. No, we're still together. We have not moved house. We are still. Oh no, wait. We have moved house, but we were forced to move house because the landlord was like, "You can't live in this house anymore." So we had, we did move house, but we're still living with the same people. We're not living alone, and we are just spending more money than we would like to. Yeah, things are good. She's well. She's gigging here tonight at the Bill Murray. I was going to plug the gig, but it will be a long time <laughs> between now and then for you to go. But um, yeah, she's well. She's good. We're we're doing all right. Again, if not, how are you finding your relationship with another comedian? What could you do to make that better? Oh, man. I'm so boring. All I do is talk about... Uh, do you know what? This time last year, I think I liked Catherine a bit more than I like her now. I'm over it. <laughs> No, uh, we're good. We're fine. Stop asking. We're we're all right. The relationship with another comedian is it's it's lovely. Uh, we never see each other because we're always on the road. I have no idea who she is or where she is or what's going on. So you can ask me another question about something else now. And if you ask another question about Catherine, then I'm we livid. I walk out of here. You've recently started hot yoga, but you can't do it without vomiting. Can you do it without vomiting now? Uh, I haven't done hot yoga since the time that I vomited. I just, I don't do it. I don't like it. I don't like being hot and I don't like moving. So why would I do hot yoga? Oh, that that was this time last year. So but basically, my partner, who I might have mentioned previously in this podcast, keeps trying to get me to do various types of yoga. And it's literally, so it would have been a year ago that she was making us do hot yoga. Now she's trying to make us do normal temperature yoga. And I'm not into it. I just don't want to. I don't like being amongst old people smog old people who are more flexible than i am not into that don't want to do it don't like it would rather stay at home and watch the aforementioned netflix how's your mental health it's all right at the moment it's good i um yeah i'm doing all right it was bad for a while i had quite a tough time with my mental health in relation to comedy and not feeling good enough about things but I think that is probably quite a common thing for a comedian as well. And I think it's very difficult when you're constantly being judged by audiences and critics and bookers and promoters and things like that. And constantly having people commenting on what you're doing at work is quite difficult. But yeah, I'm feeling good at the moment, but that could all change. It's very up and down. It's a constant thing, but my mental health is doing okay. Thank you for asking. Um, And I think it's probably, that's kind of an important thing, isn't it? To check in with yourself, isn't it? Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for asking. I'm doing all right. Cheers. Without yoga. Have you been to the doctors about the weird droopy thing yet? Because every single day you wake up and you're like, today's the day I'm going to go to the doctor about the weird droopy thing. And we still haven't gone to the doctor. So have you been? 
and what's the problem? It's been three years. Go to the doctor about the droopy thing. If you haven't been now, go now. After you, when you finish with Simon, go to the, to the doctor about the droopy thing. I'm serious. <laughs> I haven't been to the doctor about the droopy thing. <laughs> in fact, now the only thing that's changed in relation to the droopy thing is I'm more confident about talking about the droopy thing in public situations. So I'm just going to tell you what's going on, right? I have a weird. <laughs> I've got a weird droop in my like bum hole. <laughs> And I think it's harmless. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I hope it's harmless. This might be one of those things where it's like, a girl recorded a podcast before she died. <laughs> I'll go. To, I will go to the doctor about it. I have a doctor's appointment in a, in a couple of weeks, and I'll ask. I just there's always something else I need to ask the doctor about, and I don't prioritise my bum droop. I call it the bum droop. Um, and I've grown, I've grown quite fond of it as well. It's not changed or anything. It's just it's just something that's there. I mean, I'm <laughs> probably going to discover it's really life-threatening and I've just what did you say three years I think it's three four years did I say three years I mean yeah I've had a bum droop for four years and I've I've never got it checked out so I'll let you know, I'll let you know how that goes I, uh, I might regret confessing to that on this podcast <laughs> has it gotten any bigger I think it did for a little while and then it got smaller and I can't believe you asked me that after I just confessed. I, I, I think it, I, it's not really changing. It's it's just a, yeah, it's just, it's very constant. It's a, it's a steady, it's, it's the steadiest relationship I've had in my life, I think. <laughs> Do you think it's been a good year? Please give me a highlight of your year, a really, really good one. Impress me. Yeah, it's been a good year. Highlight of my year. Um... I went to a drag show on Thursday. That was a highlight. It was great. I like watching RuPaul on Netflix. And we went to go and see all of the drag queens from RuPaul. And it was amazing. It was incredible. It was like being, being at my first concert. I was really into it. Really into it. like that a lot. Highlights. I suppose I should give you a highlight in terms of my career. I did my first ever show on my own at the Fringe. It was a 40-minute show, so it wasn't like a debut or anything, but I did, it was my first time doing a show by myself, and that was really good. And I have to say, that was a highlight. That felt good. And that's probably contributed to me feeling good about myself. I hope you're impressed. Wow. Must have been a good show. Oh, that's nice. What kind of material are you writing now? What are you writing about? Do you think it's good? Uh, my show? Uh, oh, oh no, I'm writing material about uh, a girl that I used to nanny for. I'm not a nanny anymore, really, because they stopped paying me, so now I'm just a woman that won't leave. Um, I, I think she's brilliant. I think she's really cool. She's really confident and amazing and fantastic. But I also think that there is kind of an institutionalised problem with the way that we raise girls in this country and in the Western world. And I think she's kind of losing her confidence and lots of amazing qualities about her. So I'm writing comedy about my relationship with her and how I worry the world will change her. We're thinking about writing material about folding things because you think Catherine is a witch because she can fold a sheet with elasticated corners. Did you actually write any good material about folding things? And if not, did you get better at folding things? Nope, because that's not funny. That's not a funny thing. I don't know what we were thinking then. God, you, you're making you, you've made yourself sound like a really boring person. You sat at home like, oh, maybe I'll just write some comedy about folding things. What a bellend. Um... No, I have not gotten any better about f with folding things because I have a life. Maybe you should th think about getting one. Nah, I, d I just don't bother now. I just screw it up, throw it in the drawer, and somehow when I look back, it's done. <laughs> She's going to fucking kill me. <laughs> um, no, I did not write that. It wasn't very good, and I don't think I care. Are you more confident writing material now? That's a good question. Definitely. Definitely more confident writing material, and it pro I don't think it's anything to do with my ability to write better material. I think it's just more my trust in myself to be able to write something that is funny, and it might have a lot to do with the fact that I've decided to not write jokes about folding sheets, which sounds so shit. I'm going to have to look back through my notebooks and find why I thought that could possibly be humorous in any way, because that sounds dog shit. Do you still make that joke about not looking gay despite the fact that you definitely look really, really gay right now and you wrote that joke in 2013 and maybe you should just stop doing that joke? I do not do that joke anymore. Oh, that's something to be proud of, isn't it? No, I've, I've let that joke go. I still talk about being gay on stage, but I've kind of... I've, I've figured out 
why I do that and I, there's a reason why I like talking about being gay on stage I think it's an important thing to talk about and no I don't do the joke because I look more gay now I've got a little bit of a shaved head as well so there's no way that everyone would be like we can see you gay gay person I'm writing material about how I look more gay now actually I wrote a joke about how I like to wear suits the other day which is funnier than it sounds god why am I obsessed with clothing and materials and bed sheets what's wrong with me but yeah no I've stopped doing that joke you'll be pleased to hear do we still love Taylor Swift unconditionally or have we accepted that she might be a terrible person oh god do you know what I'm having a bit of a I'm having a bit of a relapse into Taylor at the moment I I was doing all right and then the other day I found out that she was in Kentish Town which is not far from where I live and just all these feelings kind of started flooding back and I was like, God, I, don't know, I, was, I was quite upset actually. I sort of sulked for the whole day because I hadn't... She'd recorded a music video in Kentish Town in a kebab shop and I was gigging at Pegasus Comedy, which is in Kentish Town, which is a great gig that is just, is, is without fail, always just comedians doing material in front of each other. And so I'd been and done my new five minutes of material to a bunch of comedians including simon kane i believe and then i found out that taylor swift was in kentish town like a day before or a day after that and I, yeah i was I, I really suffered that day i sort of sulked for the entire day because my feeling about taylor swift is that i am and have been for many years a super fan but because my love for her began before the internet was used so much before twitter was a big thing and because I didn't start like a blog or anything or like an Instagram account in her honour, I'm not invited to her house or to be in her music videos and things like that. Like these other super fans are supposed to be. I'm doing air quotes, by the way. Uh, and I'm, I'm really gutted about it. I'm kind of, it's a personal, it's a bit of, it's a, bit of a thing for me. It's kind of a sensitive subject. And I just feel as though she will never know how much I care. And so in answer to your question... No, we've not realised that she's a terrible person. We still love her. And if Taylor is listening, I'm totally chill. At the moment, jealousy has been a big problem in a lot of relationships and in the way that you view yourself as a comedian. How are you coping with that right now? Have you gotten any better at curbing your jealousy? Because it's pretty exhausting right now. Oh, did I phrase that question in two different ways? How oh, nice. Um, I have gotten better, actually. I'm a lot happier with who I am and... With my comedy, and I think maybe maybe I asked that question because I was in, at the at that time thinking about writing a show about jealousy. Uh, but I am much happier with a lot of things, including my comedy. So yeah, and I think that has that took a while, and that took some serious working through. But I think I have arrived at a place where I do. I am pleased with what I have and what I'm doing at the moment. And how is the sitcom going? Which one? Um, <laughs> I was like, a, mm, which sitcom? It's if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's kind of on the back burner because it's it's it's, it's a little bit of a high concept idea, and so I keep sending it to people, and they're like, "That sounds great, but we do not have the budget to pull that off," which is fine, you know, it's cool. So I'm kind of um, I'm still thinking about writing it and i'm still developing it but it's it, it'll it'll happen one day i promise and when it does it's gonna be fucking amazing I swear to god blow your minds watch this space please tell me your best new joke oh fuck off what a dickhead why would i say that i'm not gonna do it do you know what i'm not gonna rise to your stupid we we hate it i hate it i am we're not two people i am one person and we hate it when people ask us <laughs> i feel like Gollum. um I hate it when people ask me to tell them a joke, so I'm not going to do it for you, 2016 Sarah, you dickhead. I'm not, no, I'm not. No, come and see a show, Bellend. How are you feeling about your debut hour? Are you confident? Are you happy with what you're writing? Because you know you can wait. We can wait. We can definitely wait. You can wait. We can wait. There's no rush. You're very young. You look great. Do you know what, Sarah? I am feeling confident. We're feeling great. We're feeling really good about it, which is nice. Because this time last year, I know that you and I were not feeling confident about the debut hour. We were very concerned that we would never be able to do it. But I am feeling good. So should be all right. 
I'm saying this now, when it gets nearer to Edinburgh next year, I'm probably going to be crying on the floor, being like, 2016 Sarah said we had to, we could wait, and, and we didn't listen to her. <laughs> At the moment, we're very excited because on Sunday we're going to start trampoline dodgeball. Is that everything we hoped it would be? Oh man, that's a sad story. Um... My housemate and I, Adele Cliff, who is also a very good comedian, we we attempted to start a trampoline dodgeball team and uh, it failed miserably because it turns out children really like going to trampoline parks um, and we didn't want to be near those children. So we went once and never went back. <laughs> okay, we have been in London for three years now. Are we happy? Do we have any regrets? What's the night tube like? Is the night tube a thing? Has it started yet? Okay, I've not. I've had no experience because I don't think it's the line that I use, and also I don't go out very much. Um, we are happy. I'm liking London. I wish uh, I had more money. I wish London was not so expensive, but I suppose that's me and everybody else that lives in London. Uh, but yeah, I like it. We've moved to a nice new place. It's cool. It's in Kilburn. It's very nice. I like London a lot. We are happy. What can we do to be happier today? Oh, okay. I was obviously in a really strange mood this time last year. I feel like it's all about mental health and self-preservation and hot yoga and bed sheets. Um, that's weird. I also just realised that you asked if I had any regrets from the last year being in London. I don't think I have any regrets. I'm not sure if I do. Probably. I'll have a think about that as I answer this question. Happier today. Um, I don't know. I'm having a really good day today. I woke up. I got ready, I came to meet Simon, I bought myself a vegetarian sausage roll on the way, which was delicious. Um, I've got a coffee, I'm about to go and do an afternoon gig, which is a rare treat, because it's over by 6pm. And then I'm going to watch Catherine in a gig. You've heard about Catherine, right? I've mentioned her once or twice. But no, I'm, uh, today, is a, today is a good day, as per, I don't really know what else I could do. I'm, per- I'm, I'm, I'm good, actually, I'm fine, so chill. And one final question from Catherine... If we have broken up, what are you doing to win me back? The answer will be nothing. Because she probably made the decision. (laughs) And she's scary. I think I'm going to have a little bit of a word with myself about maybe doing podcasts and not mentioning Catherine. And just like maybe talking about myself and my career and focusing on me. That's what I can do to be happier today. Is stop talking about my fucking girlfriend all the time. And start talking about myself. I don't, you know what? We are still together. But had we broken up, I wouldn't be doing anything to win her back. I'd be living my best life, do you know? Which is not to say that I want to break up and my best life is us breaking up. But I just think that maybe then, if we were to break up, I'd be able to do a podcast without obsessively mentioning her in every other question. And, you know, that'd be nice for other people listening to it. Yeah, I was clearly very into her this time last year. Also, she probably just helped me write the questions for this and I was being lazy. You're feeling frustrated about a lot of things at the moment. Are you feeling better and are you feeling more confident? And are the things that you were feeling frustrated about last year improving? And if not, get off your fucking ass and fix it. Oh man, I was obviously not in a great place this time last year. Can you hear the way I'm talking? You're feeling very frustrated about a lot of things at the moment. I feel like my, it's like I'm silent talking about my therapist. There have been a lot of things bothering you at the moment, Sarah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm good. And also, I feel like every other question is the same one. It's like it's, it's, I'm basically just flipping between, how's Catherine? How's your mental health? How's Catherine? How's your mental health? Like, uh, my mental health is fine. Catherine is fine. I wish I'd ask some more questions about, like, how fucking cool I am and stuff. Because this is bollocks. Have you embarrassed us by still not having a full driving license? No, I passed my driving test in February. It was great. I don't actually think that I should have passed my driving test. I think that I I hit the curb during the test. I got like one below the amount of minors that you can get before they tell you that you're shit. And I think I I just accidentally got on really well with the examiner and he was like he was like it wasn't a great driving test, but I'm going to let you pass anyway, which I I just think is probably not the way that these things should be done uh but no we have a full driver's license we've driven a lot i drive to a lot of gigs now i only had one near crash on the m1 at 70 miles an hour and i've been driving my housemate's car so it's not even it's not cool it's not good we were driving along and i panicked and 
nearly moved into the right hand lane really quickly and our wing mirrors touched and mine went flying backwards and we all just carried on and I like lost my mind like lost my absolute shit and was like I'm I'm 100% going to die on my way to this gig in oh where were we I was I think I was driving to Nottingham I was like I'm going to I'm going to die on my way to do a stupid gig in Nottingham that's paying 50 quid and that's what they're going to talk about in the newspapers when they say stupid comedian kills self on her way to tell jokes about how she doesn't look gay and bed sheets. <laughs> it's not worth it. Do I have any more questions for future Sarah? Are we still not wearing a bra? Yeah, no, we haven't worn a bra in so long, which is great. It's a really nice life. Do you know what I did? I treated myself last edit, uh, the, the most recent Edinburgh, I treated myself to some new bandos because I was like living off uh, two bandos. And I don't know why, but for some reason, like I'm really good at spending money on like alcohol and food. But I, if I ever need anything, I'm like really hesitant and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can afford that. So just before Edinburgh, I bought myself 10 new bandos. So I didn't have to wear the one that had a hole in and my nipple would pop through. Also in the last year, I've gotten really confident about making jokes about nudity and I don't know why. So that's why I've told you all about my bottom droop today. <laughs> Catherine's gonna kill me. A bando is, um, it's just like a piece of material. Um, like, oh, how do I, do? oh shit, describing things like this. It's a good thing my job doesn't involve words. It's just like a bit of elasticated material that goes around your like your I was gonna say bra area, but it is boobs. It's boobs, and it's it just kind of covers up more than supports because I don't actually have boobs to support, so I don't need anything. It's just to stop me getting a nip on, really, <laughs> which I think is it needs to be like the name of this podcast. It's just to stop me getting a nip on, but it doesn't really stop me sometimes if it's cold enough. When you look back over the last year, what is the memory that makes you most happy or that you're most proud of? Mate, that's the same question as any highlights. Like, you are... Jesus Christ. God. This might, this may be the most boring podcast that has ever been recorded. Cause you, and I'm blaming you, all right? I'm blaming you for your shitty questions. You should have asked more interesting things. The memory that makes me most happy, my probably my last show from this Edinburgh, which was just really, really great. And the show before it's so the night before I did my last show of the run um i'd had a really great one it had gone really well my room had been like full the entire time and then the, the second to last show randomly on a friday night it was just like dead and for a number of reasons i ended up crying <laughs> and walking off the stage and so it was like a real like low point of the fringe and the final show that i did was just great it was just it just went really really well people because what happened the night before wasn't exactly my fault there was like a quite a unpleasant guy in the room and so people from that show had come back to actually see the show properly and it was really full and it was great and my mum and dad were there and it was just like a really nice way to end it so it was good that was probably a highlight that makes me happy if you could go back in time a year to when you're asking these questions would you add any more questions in now what would be the questions you would add do we still have great hair yeah we have great hair (laughs) don't be stupid um I don't know, I don't know, I'd have to think about it, but I'd definitely ask better questions than you did. You, I'm not going to call you any more names, because that's not going to help, because you're clearly in a difficult place. I think I would ask some more positive questions. I think I would try and add a little bit more panaz to the question asking, and maybe I'd be a bit sillier, but I was clearly not in a silly mood at that time. I was clearly feeling really deep. No, I don't know what I'd ask. I'd ask less questions about Catherine and more questions about me. I would, I'm not sure whether I'd include the bomb droop thing. Hmm. I probably was, to be fair, because it's, it's good that you've said that I need to go and get that checked out. And it will be really, do you know what? I would kind of wish I'd been and, and figured out what it was because that would have been a nice little way to tie that up, but it's still a mystery. So Simon might have to get me back in to do like a, <laughs> a conclusion on the bomb droop saga that I know you're all desperate to find out the answer to. So no, I don't, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just make it more interesting. Because, honestly. If you could come back in time to this day, on the record day, what advice would you give yourself? I would say, don't... I think I would... Do, I mean, I would probably just say, like, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't Don't assume that you are just constantly getting things wrong. And I would say that it's... I think you just need to kind of get on with it get on with your shit carry on with what you're doing 
there's not many things that I that I would like try and alter or change about the last year because I think some mistakes I made led to good things, which sounds really wanky, but um, like at one point I had a freak out and had a bit of like a Barney with my agent, but it was an, it was good because it was like a kind of make or break situation, which was brilliant for me because I then just turned around and was like, hold on a minute, this is not the way to deal with these things, and then I kind of changed the way I was thinking but I think that needed to happen because otherwise I'd have just carried on being a miserable person so I don't think I'd say to myself like don't do that or change this because they were good things in the end so I would say don't be super hard on yourself and cheer up Chuck That was Sarah. Her honesty about her jealousy and her envy about her partner and how she's overcome it and and seeing her change as a person and a performer, it's been, it was such a lovely uh, expression of who she was and who she is and this was so much fun and so fascinating in terms of the human condition and, and relating to people and trying to improve yourself and not trying to change the other person and I really enjoyed it. I, I, I think also I really want to know what the joke was about the fitted sheet. I'm really curious as to what that could be. I, I can't think of anything so um, I might badger her at some point to just let me see her notebook from a year ago if she even still has that. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. If you did please do remember to hit the subscribe button if you're new. If you're old here please do consider giving us an honest review in iTunes. They really help out. An honest positive review. If you have anything negative to say email it to me separately but if you have something ideally five stars to give the show that a lot of work goes into this. Every episode takes about a year well it takes a minimum of a year to make but it takes about 18 hours of editing so if you could give us an honest review that was positive and help the show out please do also please do remember to join the facebook group where you can find out exclusive content about the show and about future guests and i always pose a question to you that was inspired by some of the questions that the guests left this week and this week i want to ask you and this is inspired by her love for taylor swift and the frustration of uh, a lack of being appreciated as a fan i suppose this is kind of a weird way of asking i've got a patreon and i and i would love to start getting donations for that and and building up a community of diehard fans for the show who will help me keep going basically production has begun on series two of this and uh, as a result of doing two seasons in tandem it's sort of cutting into my social life and cutting into my uh, sort of paid work um so uh, I, i'd love to have some sort of backing and and support from you guys in that way if you can't do a regular donation there can be a one-off one from the website feel free to to send me money that way but yeah what would what would you like to see as a patreon as a reward uh, that would make you feel more valued as a member of this community uh, any and all suggestions welcome please go to the facebook group and write what you would like to see as a reward and i will see if i can get it for you the audio time capsule is a fruit that got in gravity's way production for the internet all elements were created by me comedian simon kane except the music that was composed and recorded by david jordan thank you very much for listening thank you very much for subscribing and And thank you very much for rating and donating if you do. I'll see you all in about 14 days time. Bye.